is where we take the people we have and we now start to invest in them, mentor them, develop them, coach them, guide them to their levels of success. And then we start looking at, well, how do I become a developer of people? How do I get people to do wonderful things? How do I share with people that they have so much power within themselves that they can accomplish so many great things? And see, when I'm stuck in a supervisory position, I don't think like that. Leadership now, how can I invest in you? How can I show you, tell you, teach you so that you know that you can do great things? So that you believe it's not just possible for me, but it's, it's, it's possible for, for you. See, we have to quickly realize that leadership is not a position that we play at work. Leadership is who we become. So we have to gather all of these intricate pieces, put them together, so that we can be complete. So when our people look at us, they know, they trust us. Because let me give you a tip. When you get to that point, people are going to start wanting to know what's going on. They're going to know how you got your organization going. They're going to know, well, why is your department so much different than everybody else's? Why is yours positive? Why are, your, why are your results there? Why are your team inspired to do things when everybody else is just stuck on being average? You know the word I like to use for average? Irrelevant. And some of us have got to the point that we don't really make a difference one way or another. And that's what I don't should. need this change. <laughs> Who needs change like this? I could have done this to myself. I don't need to be this frustrated. And then you're like, and then you're like, okay, I don't need it. Now I don't want it. The resistance to change is just like overwhelming. No, stop, don't. Can I get my old computer back? <laughs> Can I uninstall 2007 and put 2003 right back on there? And then you start going, okay, okay. If it's not go away, go away. I gotta figure out how to do this thing. And you start to muddle through it. You're mad about them. You're frustrated. You're like, I can't believe I have to do this. I can't believe I have to use this. Why can they make it so simple? Why does the change have to be so difficult? And then eventually, you come around and you start using it, and using it, and using it. You go, oh, it's not so bad. It's all right. Oh, it's got this little cool feature. My other one didn't do that. See, some of us are stuck in a typewriter mentality. <laughs> Let me go back and get my typewriter. And type it off. Could you imagine having to type up stuff on a typewriter now? I'm not talking about one document, I'm talking about stuff, all that stuff. But you remember how that change took place? I know you don't. <laughs> <laughs> but what happened was, it was like this. You probably never seen, you know you know what type of is? <laughs> you type, type, type. Yeah. Type, type. Oh, I messed up. <laughs> Light out. <laughs> Put it back in there. Oh, now it's all over the board and messed it all up. And you messed it up. And somebody must tell you, watch how easy it's going to be. You're going to type it up into this thing right here. Then you're going to hit this button right there, and it's going to come out over there on a piece of paper. You go, no. <laughs> Think about that. Cell phones. Hardly anybody doesn't have a cell phone. I'm walking home from school with my daughter the other day. And there's like two little third graders walking, talking on their cell phone. Hey, yeah, that's what they're doing. Kids talking on cell phones now. But remember what happened? It was you mean tell me I don't need a home phone. You mean tell me that I'm gonna be able to take this big old phone, just cord and chain it with me? Because that's what they had. We had that what I call my generation, the Zach Morris brick phone. Mm -hmm. yes. There's this big gray phone that Zach Morris had on Saved by the Bell. And that was like the first one. That one came after the bag phone though, in the car. Those were real cool people had But we've started to do this, and now we're like, I can't imagine going in without my phone. I am a, I am just attached to my crackberry. I mean, it goes everywhere. I have with me. As soon as it goes off, I'm right there in it. Get digging out my pocket, I hear it beeping. Because now it's like a way of living. Think about that. Eight tracks. <laughs> now I gotta admit, you don't know what eight track is either. That's okay, because I didn't know that eight tracks had more than eight tracks on them. <laughs> I thought 8-track only had 8-track, that's it. I, I was educated. 8-track could have up to 12 tracks on it. Went from 8-track, it was like big, thick, like this big, put in there. 
and then went to a cassette. Not bad, because like you can look at the cassette and you can realize like, okay, if the tape was right there, I can flip it over on this side, put it on the other way, and then I saw it was going to be right there. My jam was right there. <laughs> and went to the CD. I'm like, oh, this CD's kind of cool, but I've got a CD player. So I bought a little Sony one, a little disc mini, put the little plug in there, have both of them right, so you can listen to your new CDs. And now it's what? iPods. iPods and MP3 players. You're like, you can have this little tool right here that has 30,000 songs on it. Who knows 30,000 songs? <laughs> but see, that is the advancement of technology that has put us in a position, but that has been some serious change. And that's what happens in your job. And your people. But is it, is, how many of you would like to go back to the rotary dial telephone? <laughs> <laughs> And if you mess up one number, yeah, and you're man, I got to start all over. That's usually the last number. Oh, that would be so frustrating. But who wants to go back to that? How many people fought it? Let's go back to that track or album. When you have people that are doing those things, operating that situation, it's because their self-belief isn't there. And as leaders, it's our job to help How them. powerful is it when we take one minute to pray somebody, 60 seconds to just tell somebody how important they are, show how much we appreciate what they're doing, and pat them on the back for the, for the things that they're doing. When it comes down to it, what is leadership? Author and leadership guru John Maxwell defines it in a very simple way. He says that leadership is our ability to influence people no more, no less. So maybe the question is, how much influence do you have right now with your people? How well do they respond to the things that you ask them to do? Now I know quickly many of you are going, but Travis, how do I get more influence? It's easy. Build stronger relationships. And those relationships are built from our daily interactions with our people. So how well do you interact with your staff right now? How successful are your relationships with your staff? How well do you handle the conflict that's going on in your office? The turmoil between two people on your team? How well are we able to handle those people that, that don't seem to even want to be motivated? How well are you interacting each and every day? I'm talking about the contagious momentum that each of us carries within our lives. And it starts with characteristics like passion and excitement and enthusiasm. It tackles things like our character, courage, and all these things build up inside of us that says, do you have the mojo? And if you don't, what are we going to do to help you bring the mojo? 